Hey folks, Evangelist Matt Bullen, Supernatural Secrets, Secrets. Jesus said in Luke 8, 10, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God. It's your right. Daniel said in Daniel 2, 28, there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, 10, his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. And I have one of God's deep secrets to share with you today. God's secret treasures. God's secret treasures. In the mind of Almighty God, the creator of the universe, the king of the universe, what is a treasure in his mind? I think of when I was a boy, Treasure Island, the Disney movie, and about the chests of gold that they were searching for on Treasure Island. I think about the movie Kidnapped, which was about a, a boy kidnapped on a pirate ship and finally finds the treasure and makes his family wealthy. I think about the Count of Monte Cristo. Oh my goodness. When I was a little boy, I watched the old version and how they found an island with chests and chests and chests of gold. And the prisoner became the Count of Monte Cristo with that treasure. I remember watching Aladdin with my children. And he's in that cave and he's writing on the carpet. And there's just treasure everywhere. The place is just dripping with jewels and gold and all kinds of beautiful treasure things. And then I remember the Hobbit. Oh my goodness. Forget that... Uh, the dragon's voice was that of Mr. Cumberbatch, so it was an awesome voice. But he slithers through all that gold, all those jewels. What a treasure. That's everybody's dream. We write fantasy about it because it's a dream. So what is God's treasure? What is God's treasure? I want to point you to Mark chapter 8, and verse 37. Jesus said this, Is anything worth more than your soul? What? Jesus asked the question, Is anything worth more than your soul? What's the context of this question? Well, let's jump back to verse 36. Jesus said, and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? Wow. Number one, secret number one, consider the comparison. Jesus considers the compare, compares, I mean compares the value of the whole world to one soul. That's what was in his heart. That's what was in his mind. One soul, he says, is worth more than the whole world. He said, is there anything worth more than your soul? Wow, consider this comparison, y'all. I googled it. The total wealth of the world is estimated to be right now about 80 trillion dollars. Do you know what Jesus was saying in Mark 8, 36 and 37? He was saying that you, your eternal soul, my eternal soul is worth way more than 80 trillion dollars. Consider the comparison. What is the worth of a soul? What is the value of a soul? What is God's secret treasure? Souls. Souls. The souls of men and women are the secret treasure of the king of the universe. They are more valuable. If he looked at the movie Hobbit, he would see the dragon. This is going to sound prophetic. He would see the dragon slithering through a room full of souls. 
He would see pirates searching for an island with souls. He would see not chests of gold, but souls. God's secret treasures are souls. The secret worth of a soul. And I'm not just talking about this life. He says, it's not this life. Go back one more verse. We started in 37, is anything worth more than your soul? We jump back to Mark 8, 36, what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Let's go back one more verse, get a little more context. He said in verse 35, if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. He said, give up your life and follow me in verse 34. Your soul is too valuable to hang on to this life because this life, this body, this, this apartment and all the things that we've collected are a puff of smoke, the Bible says. They appear for a little season and then vanish away. This is temporary. This is temporary. My bank account is temporary. My closet is temporary. My shoe rack is temporary. My hat rack is temporary. My refrigerator is temporary. And everything in it is temporary. God's treasure is the eternal souls of men and women. Your eternal soul. My eternal soul. The secret of a soul's worth. Consider the comparison. The whole world. Every palace. Every piece of ground. Every, every Rolex. Every whatever. I'm, I'm dating myself now. Uh, every Bentley. Every Gulfstream jet. Put it all together. It's not worth your soul. What do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? This life versus an immortal soul. If the soul of eternal soul, the immortal soul, the never dying soul of men and women is God's treasure. We need to be thinking like that. We need to be thinking like that. Consider the comparison, number one. Charles G. Finney, the leader of the Second Great Awakening in America, said, the value of a soul surpasses all human conception. You can't even imagine the worth of a soul. That's how valuable it is. And all of our accumulated wildest dreams and we put all of our dreams together we can't even imagine the worth of a soul that's a secret a supernatural secret the worth of a soul number one consider the comparison that Jesus made the world versus the cost of your soul number two consider the cost Consider the comparison. Consider the cost. In the spring of 2010, I had just been involved in rescuing a girl from an abusive home, sexually abusive home, and all hell was breaking loose in my life, in my church, in my family. And I sat down in the cab of my SUV on a, in a construction lot in Beaumont, Texas, in the spring of 2010, and I wrote this poem, A Soul's Worth, to consider the cost. What would a man trade for his soul? The whole world couldn't pay the toll. The Son of God from heaven came down to feel our pain, to tread our ground, to trade our sins for his beauty, to become a ransom for the many. A soul's worth. Can it be the price of a soul 
hung on that tree, the death of God was the price required for our redemption. He was scarred. He gave his all to end our strife. Look what he gave for your life. It's a supernatural secret that the soul is worth more than the world. It's worth vastly more than the world. It's worth vastly more than $80 trillion. Because what a soul cost is the God of heaven becoming man. Coming down. Entering the womb of a human woman. Being born. Having his diapers changed. Learning to talk. Learning to walk. Learning to eat. Learning the language, growing up, and taking all the sins of all time off of all of his treasures, his treasured souls, and putting them on himself. Suffering on that cross, we can't understand it. Eternal torment for every man, woman, and child ever born and ever to be born. Suffered all the eternal torment ever to be given out on himself on that cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In all eternal history, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit had never been apart. The cost, consider the comparison, consider the cost. The secret of a soul's worth. John 3.16 For this is how God loved the world. His treasure. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That's the worth of a soul. John 12, 27, Jesus said, Now my soul is deeply troubled should I pray, Father, save me from this hour? But this is the very reason I came. Consider the cost. Consider the cost of your soul. Luke twelve fifty. Jesus said, I have a terrible baptism of suffering ahead of me, and I am under a heavy burden until it is accomplished. Oh, the price he paid. Listen as I read from Isaiah 53, 3 through 11. The prophecy about the coming Christ. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care, yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream, but he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone. But he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him. What? Verse 10. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. For when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life 
and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous, for he will bear all their sins. He thought you were a treasure worth going through that for. He thought I was a treasure worth going through that for. God's secret treasures, us. The secret of a soul's worth. The secret of a soul's worth. Reminds me of the man who had a dream. And in his dream, God came to him and said, Son, I want you to do something for me. And the man said, Anything you want, Lord. You know, I'm yours. I'll do whatever you want. And so God took him and he took him over and they hovered over this planet. And on this planet was covered with growling, fighting, snarling, biting dogs. And God said to the man, I want you to go down there and I want you to live among those dogs. And the man said, okay, God. He said, and I want you to be a chihuahua. The man said, okay, God. He said, now, understand, they're going to kill you. They're going to tear you apart. But don't worry, because I'm going to raise you back to life. The man said, okay, God. And then God said to the man, but there's one catch. I'm going to raise you back to life, but you'll have to be a chihuahua for all eternity. And the man woke up. Do you know, one of the greatest mysteries in the universe is that right now, today, there's a man sitting on the throne of heaven with scars in his hands and scars in his feet and a scar in his side. How can we explain that? A man rules heaven and he will be a man for the rest of eternity. That's the price. Consider the cost. Consider the cost of a soul. The secret of a soul's worth. Consider the cost. Consider the cost. Consider the comparison. The whole world doesn't even come close. Consider the cost. The second person of the Trinity came down and became a man. And took all the sins of all time. To rescue souls your soul my soul the greatest mystery I think in the universe is that the king of the universe is a man number one consider the comparison number two consider the cost number three this one's a little hard consider our crassness in light of those two first points, consider our crassness about souls, about how we treat our own soul, about how, how uh, neglectful we are about, about feeding our soul, about nourishing our soul, about, about how, how we spend more time, energy, money, and thoughts about fixing up this outer shell, this puff of smoke, and, and our surroundings and our comforts than we do about our souls. But not only that, our crassness when it comes to how we treat other souls. Jesus said the two greatest commandments on which all the law and the prophets hang are love God and love others. That's it. Love God, the God who loves souls and love other souls. He said those are the two greatest commandments. Everything hangs on that. Consider our crassness. Do we love our neighbor as ourself? Their souls. Their eternal souls. Do we love people from other countries the way we love ourselves? Their souls. Their eternal souls. Do we love other political 
uh, opinion people, people of other political persuasions, as much as we love ourselves, they're souls. They're souls. It doesn't matter what flag they fly. They're souls, eternal souls. Souls worth more than the whole world. One of them. Do we, do we love as ourselves people of other religions? All the other religions? They're eternal souls. Eternal souls. Souls for whom Jesus said the whole world isn't worth more than that. Souls for whom Jesus came and gave up everything to have for himself. And then he left us to go tell him about it. Oh, consider the comparison. Consider the cost. Consider our crassness. Oh, I can't tell you how many times in my ministry, in my life, I've been ashamed to be a man as I've sat and listened to a poor woman with tears running down her face tell me about how she's been misused by men over the years. And I've said to her, I am so sorry. It shames me to be a man to sit here and hear this. You deserve better than that. Consider Men, our crassness about souls, about God's treasures. I can't tell you how many times in my ministry I've heard men say, I'm struggling with pornography. You are what? You are daring to subject eternal souls to your sexual gratification? You are what? Why don't you pray for them? Why don't you pray for their mothers? Why don't you pray for their fathers, for their brothers, for their sisters, for their souls? Don't look at that junk. Don't open that door. Don't let Satan get his foot in that door. Consider our crassness. How we treat members of the opposite sex. Men, I love you, but listen to me. You're messing with God's treasures. You're messing with God's treasures. Be very careful how you treat a daughter of God, a daughter of Eve. Saved or not saved, she is an eternal soul. Do we love the poor as much as we love ourselves? Two thirds of the people on planet Earth today live on less than two dollars a day, less than two US dollars a day. Do we love the poor? They're eternal souls. They are God's treasures. Go get yourself a Bible and read every place in the Bible. It mentions the word P-O-O-R, poor, and humble yourself before God and beg for mercy that you don't treasure his treasures the way he does. I'm preaching to myself too. You know that. Do we love all races as much as we love ourselves? Their souls. It doesn't matter what color their skin is or where they were born. They're eternal souls. God's treasures. Consider our crassness. Consider our crassness. War. The people that make war don't consider God's treasures. Every war ever fought in this world was fought over property, land, possessions. If you had all 80 trillion US dollars of the world, 
it wouldn't equal one eternal never dying soul. Where does Jesus tell us to go to war? Where? What verse? Book, chapter, and verse. I'll never forget. I was helping plant a church in Pekin, Illinois, and I got some side work in Bloomington, Illinois. So Lisa and I would drive 90 miles to Bloomington every day and do four hours of work, and then we would come back and work on the church until falling into bed, and then we would get up at 1 in the morning and go deliver papers all over Pekin, and then at 4 in the morning we'd head back to Bloomington to work four hours. And I'll never forget coming home from Bloomington. We had the radio on trying to find some music. It was back in the day when you had a radio. It was the only music you had early. It was 91. And we were flipping through, and all of a sudden we heard a conservative talk radio station. And the conservative talk radio host was playing a song that had been rewritten and the song was bomb, 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 Iraq. Bomb, 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 Iraq. And I turned it off. I said, can it be that we don't recognize our crassness? Bomb eternal souls, eternal souls, never dying souls. To protect what? A body that's going to last, if we're lucky, 70, 80 years? Material possessions? That maybe Hurricane Laura is going to wipe away tomorrow? Just kidding. I'm not telling you what to think or believe. I'm asking you. Have you considered your crassness when it comes to God's treasures? Because I wrestle with this. I wrestle with this. Luke 12, 47, Jesus said, A servant who knows what the master wants, but isn't prepared and doesn't carry out those instructions will be severely punished. But someone who does not know and then does something wrong will be punished only lightly. When someone has been given much much will be required in return. And when someone has been entrusted with much, even more will be required. Brothers and sisters, please consider the comparison. Consider the cost. Consider our crassness when it comes to the treasures of God. I went on writing more of that poem in the spring of 2010, a soul's worth. Wandering through the world of men, absorbed with all that might have been, wealth is gained and empires lost without considering the lives it cost. We place the profit above the person, sacrifice all for fame and fortune. What would a man give in return? One life to save. When will we learn a soul's worth? Can it be named? What is the price of one reclaimed? Can we afford to ignore the strife? What would you give for a life? Number four, consider the condemned. Consider the condemned. Mark 16, 15. And he told them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone, every single soul. And verse 20, And the disciples went everywhere and preached. And the Lord worked through them. Charles Spurgeon Oh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, if sinners will be damned, at least let them leap to hell over our bodies. And if they will perish, let them perish with our arms about their knees, imploring them to stay and not madly to destroy themselves. 
If hell must be filled, at least let it be filled in the teeth of our exertions. And let not one go there unwarned and unprayed for. Charles Spurgeon. 38 years ago today, I had been saved a month. We started a Bible study at Manzano High School, Albuquerque, New Mexico, August 26th, 1982. We called it the Holy Spirit Bible Study. In the next two years, over 300 teens professed Christ in that Bible study. Many of them are still serving the Lord around the world today that I know about. I, I don't keep up with all of them. That was before the days of social media. For souls, I spent my junior and senior year chasing after souls. I spent my freshman year of college chasing after souls, and many, many came to Christ. Left college because it was slowing me down <laughs> from getting enough souls. And for the last 38 years, not as perfectly as I wish, not as passionately as I wish, not as aggressively as I wish, but I have given my whole life to searching out God's treasures and winning them back for him. Do you know the worth of a soul? Do you feel the worth of a soul? Do you understand the comparison? Do you understand the cost? Do you understand our crassness in this regard many times? Do you consider the condemned? One of the things I'm most excited about, about Rebecca going to Uganda, God willing, next month, and Mission Moroto, is it's going to be a forward operating base in a part of the world where everywhere you go north of it, there's millions of lost souls. God's secret treasures. It's going to be a forward operating base for souls. Soul winning. I wrote some more on the poem in the spring of 2010, A Soul's Worth. A little girl with tear-stained face, nothing can her shame erase. To save her life would be to chance the loss of wealth and circumstance to risk the ire of stony hearts, to feel the sting of many darts, searching through the trash for scraps, hungry, weary, near collapse, life's plans gone awry, there's nothing left to do but die, no coat, no shelter from the storm, pain and misery, now the norm, what would a man give in return, one life to save, when will we learn a soul's worth? Can it be named? What is the price of one reclaimed? Can we afford to ignore the strife? What would you give for a life? Father, help us. Help us to value what you value. Help us to see people as your secret treasures, eternal souls. And help us, by your power, to go help more and more and more. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. There's more to come. See you then.